just had this thought that I wanted to talk about and uh, spiritual warfare. So I think sometimes people have interesting concept or definition should be talking into my mic so spiritual warfare <clears throat> so we were doing our girls Bible study a couple weeks ago and I told the girls and this is true when you pick up your Bible to read your Bible to be a self feeder to feed yourself the Word of God every day that spiritual warfare because when you pick up your Bible the enemy is going to do everything he can to get you to put it back down if you have children they'll be rowdy if you have dogs they'll need something your husband needs something your wife wants something the telephone rings and then there goes your time I know because I actually did get out this morning to set up porch and get some, some uh, self-feeding time. So uh, I know that I uh, carried mail for 10 years and I was able to eat and deliver mail and talk on the phone and, and I multitask. But when you're spending time really self-feeding, it's good if you could just give yourself time. I know I can take two hours, but that's just because I thoroughly enjoy spending time and then in the evening when I go to bed which is middle of the night when I go to bed I have some real quiet time that I just turn off everything and I listen to what Jesus has to say to me about that day so that's very important that we start our day asking for grace you know I just say uh, I ask for and receive grace for my day. I ask for favor and receive favor for my day. I ask for uh, that I would bring you glory, right? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable unto you, my rock and redeemer. That's Psalms 19, the last verse in Psalms 19. So, as well as... Uh, asking for things you can also choose things so these are things I choose I say today I choose to agree with God I choose to believe that I am loved I am accepted in the beloved so even taking the time to do this is spiritual warfare so some people think spiritual warfare may be praying in the spirit really loud or, and I'm not saying that's not it's not all that spiritual warfare is. Spiritual warfare is what it says, 2 Corinthians 10 5, where it says, Now the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down vain imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So that's spiritual warfare. When you have a bad thought, when the enemy accuses your sister or your brother of something evil, Jesus said, think no evil. Jesus said, to hate your brother is to murder. Jesus said, if you look after a woman to lust after her in your heart, that's sin. You've already committed adultery. Well, I mean, it's not sin to say, oh, that's a pretty... That's not sin, but it's sin if you're thinking about having a sex with them. That's sin. The Lord says you're sinning in your heart. You're sinning. So, uh, no, oh, it's a baby deer did. So that's spiritual warfare. What is spiritual warfare? Making it to Bible study. Sunday morning, trying to get to church. You want to talk about spiritual warfare? Oh my goodness, when mine were little, ah. <laughs> Anyway, I saw this family that had 18 children. I'm like, how do you remember all their names? How do you ever get to church? You have to take three vehicles. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. I didn't watch all that. And precious people, precious, precious. At, at that, at that, even, you know, if you had five or six, typically the older ones 
they have to help. One person can't take care of that many children. So the older ones have to interact and be responsible and help. With the younger ones, I remember Dolly Parton said when she was eight years old, her mother, because back then there wasn't contraceptive, or very good contraceptive, obviously it didn't work. Her mother had her baby, and I forget what the little sister's name was, but each child was responsible for the next baby that the mother had. And um, uh, my daughter's texting me. She's going to be in Tuesday. Very excited about seeing her. She's the one helping me drive to Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin. No, Wisconsin would be easy. We're driving to Wyoming and riding horses in the Tetons. So I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Uh, sorry, I really lost my train of thought. I don't know. Just think, just talking about picking up your Bible. So when I, when I, so let's say, so this verse that I've had memorized before, but I forgot where it was found. And anyway, I'm trying to leave chapel and I can't find my verse. It's Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. So, so I'm going to quote it and then I'm going to pray it as in first person. This is spiritual warfare, okay? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is helpful, that it would edify those who listen. Seems like I forgot a few words in there. Go check it out. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is helpful to others, that it would edify those that listen. And gr grieve not the Holy Spirit. No, I think that's the, the that's, that, that's 32. So 31 is uh, get rid of all rage and anger and bitterness and slander and every form of malice. So really, if we've gotten rid of all these things, then it's easier for, you know, what Jesus said, every word, every word we speak is written down. Every word, good or bad, it's all written down. You're, by your words, you'll be condemned or by your words, you'll be justified. I think that's Matthew 12, 6 or 6, 12, or 6, 36. No, 12, 36. Try Matthew 12, 36. Um, so now, I want to make this personal, right? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God with whom you have been sealed to the day of redemption. So I'm going to make this personal. This is spiritual warfare. I choose with my will, I will not let ugly and hateful words come out of my mouth. But the words that I choose to speak will build others up. They will be helpful and they will edify others. I choose with my will to get rid of all bitterness, anger, rage, slander, and every form of malice. And I will not grieve the Holy Spirit of God because I have been sealed to the day of redemption. So that is spiritual warfare. Praying out loud, declaring and decreeing. Um, today I choose to agree with God. Decree. Say it out loud. Tell the enemy. Today I choose to agree with God. So, I don't know. I've got to be very careful about what I say, but just to give you a peek into my life. Yesterday we were at a deposition and uh, we were the... We're trying to defend ourselves, okay? I don't know what you call us, but we're being, we were being, litigations are being brought against us. And it was grueling from 8.30 till after 1.30 was my part. And then Tim's, we didn't leave there till 3.30. Anyway, in all of that, God said, Romans 12, right? Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. What did Jesus say? If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even the scribes and Pharisees do that. If you greet those who greet you, even the tax collectors and the, and the publicans do that. I mean, if you want to be true children of God, won't you try loving those who hate you? Won't you try loving those who despitefully use you? Won't you try loving those who try to sue you? And get what you've worked hard for all your life. 
try that on. So at the end of the day, ask God, did, did the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart please you today? Did I please you today, Father? Because ultimately our purpose, my purpose is to bring God glory, to bring Him honor, to bring Him praise because He is worthy and to point other people to the cross. It's the only thing that's going to make a difference in this world in their life and in the next. Because, you know, and this is also what I thought. Like this other lawyer, he, attorney or whatever you call him. So they're taught every word that we speak is being recorded. Every word. I bet she had to look up how to spell dog day So it, it, definitely caused me to think about my words you know what am I speaking what am I saying do my words have power oh there's a bald eagle oh it's so beautiful he's mature he's a beautiful white tail and white head uh, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and so I can say that and say that, but if you don't let the Holy Spirit say to you, like he did to me the other day, that didn't bring me glory. Why did you say that? Why did you bring that up? That didn't bring me any glory. You're just griping and complaining about people that offend you. I'm like, you're right. You're right, Lord. There's the police pull somebody over. It's a terrible place to pull them over. Spiritual warfare. The truth is, whether you like it or not, we are in a war. We are in a war for the souls of men. There's no greater gift that you could give Father God than to love the unlovable and bring him a soul. Love them into the kingdom. Our greatest weapon is love. Our greatest weapon is real love. Love them, love them, love them into the kingdom. when I think about we help with this little ministry for the homeless people and God has not forgotten them they are not worthless they're made in the image of God just as we were you know so we pick up backpacks when we're out thrifting which I I try to do a lot, hadn't been lately. And I pray over them. So when someone receives that backpack, they'll feel loved. They'll feel the arms of the Lord around them. And the truth is, what Jesus said, do you remember? Jesus said, the king said, prepare a feast, prepare a feast and invite all my friends. So they prepared the feast and his servants went out and invited all of his friends. And you know what his friends said? I'm too busy. I'm getting married. I'm plowing my field. I'm doing my business. I'm too busy to come to the banquet. And it made the king angry. And he told his servants, go to the highways and the byways. Get the people that have no homes that are living on the street and compel them to come in. To my house that my house may be full and that is God's love for these people so you may and I commend you for being a good part of society and paying your bills on time and having a real home but you know the truth is that doesn't mean you're gonna make it to heaven and these people that are homeless that are desperate if they latch on to Jesus they are gonna make it to heaven just like Lazarus in the and the rich man, Lazarus was poor. And he didn't go to heaven because he was poor. He went to heaven because he loved God. And the rich man didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he didn't love God. And I have heard people say, oh, Jesus told that story and it was just an allegory. That's not true. Jesus told that story because he could see into heaven and he could see into hell. And he knew that rich man's name. 
He knew Lazarus' name too. Not to be confused with the Lazarus that he raised from the dead. That was Mary and Martha's brother, who he, whom he loved very much. You know, so this is interesting, which I'm almost where I'm going. We'll have to quit. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, it was... I don't, I don't, know, I don't even know if I can explain how horrible it was that if you were his friend, then you were considered to be a criminal too, right? So, but when Jesus was raised from the dead... He was here for 40 days, and then he ascended unto heaven. Then anyone that testified that they had saw Jesus in that 40 days, the religious leaders called for their death. Think about that. To be willing to die, stand up for the truth. Standing in the truth is spiritual warfare. If somebody asks you to lie at your job and you refuse and you could lose your job, that's spiritual warfare. Taking control of your thoughts, that's spiritual warfare. And then, absolutely, come and join me as we pray. You know, I endeavor to pray an hour a day in the Spirit. As great as it is. Sometimes it's more singing and praise, and sometimes it is spiritual warfare. But that's not all that spiritual warfare is. Showing up for church on time, that's spiritual warfare. So you're a warrior, and you didn't even know it. So get your Bible out. And you can even find a Bible on your phone. It's all kinds of great blue Bible uh, I think it's called BlueBible.com. I like Bible Gateway. I'm very familiar with that. It's not an app. I just go to their website. It probably is an app. I just go to their website. I just love the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. His name, Jesus' name in heaven is the Word of God. It's pretty powerful. He's coming back for us, folks, on his big white horse. And then it says this, I think, in Thessalonians. And then we will meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. He's coming back for us one day. Praise God. Let me pray for you. I am here where I'm supposed to be going. God, I pray that you would help us understand that choosing to praise you, even when things don't go our way, is spiritual warfare. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. You are kind and good and marvelous and wonderful, and you are worthy of all of our praise. Help us do this spiritual warfare. In the name of Jesus.